everybody welcome back to my channel if you haven't been here before my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books I feel that's becoming my catchphrase I've got another book for you today <laughs> Australia so it's very scenic and I'll just admit when I started reading it I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy it but then a couple of chapters in and I was hooked. Blurb time. When the young governess Emily Tissington is approached by her happy-go-lucky Mal Willoughby in the streets of Brisbane Australia her proper English upbringing prevents her from encouraging conversation but later, another chance meeting with Mal will involve her in a controversy of murder and intrigue that will ruin her reputation. For just as the friendship blossoms, Mal is threatened with hanging for a crime he didn't commit, and hunted by the police, he turns to his only friend, Emily. This is a story of innocence and fierce loyalty, of a man with simple tastes battling a sinister conspiracy, and of a woman living with fear and uncertainty in a lawless land. Their journey into the unknown has surprising consequences. So yeah, there's a bit of a mystery in there. It's set in Australia in 1867. Um, it starts on the 4th of October. That's literally the first chapter. It's the Times London, 4th of October, 1867. Or I say it's the first chapter, it's the first page, which is basically the um, female middle-class emigration society who are basically looking for women to go to Australia and get jobs. It's kind of like how to, for them to become upstanding members of society and that's where Emily and her sister Ruth, that's how it all kind of starts off for them. So you start by meeting Emily and Ruth, the sisters, and learning about their family and how they're kind of outed by their family, by their stepmother and their father ultimately. And they decide to go to Australia to become governesses. As I said when I first started this book, I wasn't sure. It sounds like a bit of an interesting premise. I thought it might get a bit long-winded, but it didn't. You're seeing this from every possible point of view you can think of. There's mentions of the uh, kind of mystery side of things of the book, with Mal and him being accused of a crime that he didn't commit, which it's interesting to talk about because he is kind of involved in what happened but he didn't commit the crime that he's been accused of. He was involved in the situation that led to the crime. I'll say that. You see it from Emily's point of view, you see it from Ruth's point of view, you see it from Mal's point of view, and then you also see it from the point of view of people who they meet along the journey. Because you've got Emily and Ruth who are sisters who seem so alike in the beginning, and then their experiences in Australia as governesses and the other jobs that kind of um, they get involved with and how their settings kind of evolve who they are. Obviously because it's originally set in London, England and you're looking at these two women of society who have been taught the proper way to talk and live and how to not have people like talk about them, how to keep them out of certain situations and Ruth steadfastly kind of holds on to that part of her life. Whereas Emily, as she kind of gets used to Australia and the settings that she's working in, she becomes a lot more laid back. So it goes from two sisters who are so alike to seeing how Emily evolves and Ruth kind of stays where she is. And then obviously she accidentally meets Mal on the streets when she's out for a walk. And Mal kind of redirects her basically. He says, You don't want to go that way because there's a bit of a barney going on. So you might want to head back the other way. So he kind of escorts her out of the way of a fight basically that's broken out. I'll admit there are certain points of this book that were kind of frustrating. And it's only because you are hearing everything. There is no real twist in this book really. I mean, I guess there is kind of when it comes to Ruth's story, but everything else you hear about, because you're seeing everything from the point of views of everybody that Emily comes across while she's in Australia, and you don't really see much of Ruth's side of the story. So I guess from that point of view, Ruth's story is not told as much. You hear little bits of what she's getting up to and her relationship, but 
it's obvious fairly quickly that Emily is the main focus of this story and her journey and how she grows up because she's the younger of the two sisters and seeing how just being on her own influences her personality and the way she's growing up. But it's it's a relatively nice story in Emily's case because you're seeing it's kind of a coming of age story for Emily. In then then the Mount story is kind of a bit of a murder mystery with a twist in the sense that you hear from the point of view of the people actually involved in the crime. As a reader, you know who's done it. The kind of mystery part is working out how all the other characters are gonna figure out what's actually happened. So when you're hearing from the point of view of the person who actually commits the crime, because it's basically, it's like a gold heist gone wrong and lots of people get shot. <laughs> That's a really, really bad description. Um, it's kind of a gold heist that's gone wrong and uh, basically Mal is sent into town to get a police escort for this legal um, gold journey. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to word it. Um, it's supposed to be like a legal thing that's happening and they're supposed to be getting a police escort to escort the gold. And then there's a heist on the police escort and basically the gold disappears, people end up dead and they're trying to work out what's going on. As a reader you know what's happened because you're hearing from the point of view of nearly everybody involved in it and so you're trying to figure out how everybody else is going to figure it out. Obviously I'm not going to say anything about who does it because that's part of the reading of it. You can be frustrated as you read it of hearing from the person who did it the person who hid the gold and kind of where the gold got hidden. When it came to the ending, I'd say it's it's a happy ending. It's not the happy ending that you thought it was going to be, but it is a happy ending. And I admit, I was very satisfied with the ending. It was a very satisfactory ending, I think. Especially when you look at the journey that both Emily and Mal went on throughout the book. I guess it kind of works out to be a happy ending for both of them, but not in the way that you think it's going to be. As you can tell, I actually really enjoyed this book and I wasn't expecting to initially just because it wasn't a book that I'd pick. I think this was one that my mum read originally. I'm not quite sure where my mum got this from, but she said, when I mentioned I was reading it and I was watching the story, she was like, oh, I've read that book. And it was like, oh, well, I'm reading it now and I'm enjoying it. It was just one that was on the bookcase that I hadn't read. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm going through the books in the house that I haven't read. Whether it's a book that I initially would have thought about reading or not. I mean, I've got, like, The Thoughts of Agatha Christie here. I've got all the, like, Narnia books, the Chronicles of Narnia that I want to get through. I was planning on reading the Narnia books years ago because I worked a production of... Uh, the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe at Leeds Playhouse. It was my first show. It was the Christmas show at Leeds Playhouse when I first started. And we sold all the books as merch. And I was there going, I think I probably read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe years and years ago, probably when I was at school, but I haven't read the rest of them. And I have a massive book of all of the books. <laughs> I'll get it off my bookshop so you can see it. So this, this is it. As you see, it's massive and it's the complete Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. So it's got all of them in it. So one day I will read this and I will talk about it on the channel. Um, but I just have not got to it yet. It's a few books deep into my bookshelf. So it might be a while, but I'm planning on doing it. So I'll just put that down there for now. But yes, so if you like books about Australia, you'll probably like it. It's very descriptive and, you know, you can hear about all the scenery and stuff. So it's gorgeous from that point of view. I think this book would work for quite a lot of different types of people. So obviously you've got the whole thing of people who just want to read about Australia. You've got the bit of the murder mystery in there. You've got the coming of age story with Emily. And you've got that crime story. So there's a, just a bit of everything in it. And oh, how many pages was it? It's 536 pages. So it's a long one. The chapters are quite long chapters as well. So when I was like reading it, I'd be able to read like a chapter, put it down and then come back. I did finish this one while I'd been at the theatre. I just got back into lockdown, so I won't be able to go to the theatre for a while. Well, it's supposed to be a month. It's supposed to be a month. 
we'll see. This is the front cover of the book. So I'll pop a link in the description. It's most likely to just gonna be an Amazon link. Obviously you don't have to buy it from Amazon if you don't want to. But yeah, it's just an easy place to find it if you wanna try and find it somewhere else. Go for it, I'm not being paid by Amazon to talk about this. Nobody knows who I am. No one knows who I am. I just like reading and talking about the books that I read because it's my niche. So that's my niche, talking about books. Hey everyone, Editing Debbie here. Um, I realised after watching and editing that I never actually mentioned the name of the book throughout the entire video. So here you go. It's called Orchid Bay <laughs> and it's by Patricia Shaw. Yeah, I just thought I'd make sure that the title was in there because otherwise there might be some people who are just like, what on earth is she talking about? Because she hasn't mentioned the name of the book at all. <laughs> But yeah, Orchid Bay, Patricia Shaw. Go read it. It's brilliant. <laughs> so that is the book. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, I have been Debbie. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. You can click on those bell notifications if you want to know exactly when I upload. Mwah. Love you. Stay safe. My ring light is so bright, I am just seeing rings wherever I look. <laughs> That's one for the bloopers. Mm -hmm.